At Appleton Christian University, we're now in our third year deploying uh, iPhones or iPod Touches to incoming freshmen, and just this year have a fully saturated undergraduate campus, meaning all full-time undergraduate students have a device. So lots of teachers are doing lots of things in lots of different kinds of classes. When I look for trends about apps broadly across our undergraduate program, uh, there are and there are apps that that teachers and students are using to extend learning outside the classroom. So, for example, flashcard apps have done pretty well in a couple of our settings. There are within the classroom apps, uh, responseware from the Turning Tech folks we've been using. Uh, we've had uh, literally an explosion of podcast of, of I'm sorry course blogs um, in the last year. I think over 70% of faculty have made use of at least one course blog uh, representing uh, several thousand students each semester. And in some sense, that along with live internet searches during class and so on, are examples of things that really happened ahead of our deployment of mobile devices. But as the campus culture kind of caught on with the excitement of the initiative, folks who were teaching upper level classes where students didn't have devices yet got excited about things they could do. And course blogs, making some social networking uses, making existing of using devices in the classroom, computers and smartphones, and now even iPads. Uh, piggybacking on things. We've also, I think, seen some movement away from every student having to have a device in order for anything to happen to many students already have something, what can we make use of? And so some paired and team-based activities within classroom have been as or more successful for us. Um, so one of our, our mobile fellows, a chemistry professor, Dr. Powell, has been doing inquiry-based chemistry labs, but the students are in teams of four. And so uh, they tended not to all bring their devices to class to do that lab, but every, every group of four would have one or two devices. And that's really pushed us away from thinking absolute ubiquity is, a, is an opening hurdle to thinking there are a lot of things we could do that would actually foster interaction around what we can do on a device. So that's at least the beginning of what we're seeing. Um, at the Medical College of Georgia, we, we started with um, the low-hanging fruit, the convenience tools. Um, the directory, the map, the uh, ability to um, deliver learning videos through the mobile device. Um, but we thought that wasn't enough. We wanted to add a suite of uh, applications that students and physicians and, and our faculty would use. Um, so we incorporated using the Blackboard SDK into our platform. We, um, we added a suite of medical applications, uh, calculators, medical calculators, an obstetrics wheel, so different learning apps that way. Um, and then finally, we wanted to, to take that even a step further um, to try to push students to want to wanna use the mobile devices and the resources that we're providing, um, wanting to do more with, um, with more educational apps. And we looked at, at trying to license them, provide site license for the students uh, of various apps. So we had difficulties with the publishers with that. Uh, so we ended up doing our own in-house development um, and, and we've been successful in deploying several um, procedures, um, consult apps. Um, in the health sciences, uh, the students have to learn uh, procedures that, that are repetitive in nature. So um, apps that, that show a video of a procedure, the pre-procedure, post-procedure, text, graphics. Um, and we, we made it a template so the faculty can, um, can send us procedures with uh, the video and the images and the text that they want. Uh, and then we can create the app from that.